Oh, yeah. Welcome back to My Plus One, baby, with Vinny Fastline. And Tony Sarandos. Hell, yeah. And one of my, uh, one of my good friends, my buddy, comedian, producer, director, writer. This guy is a fucking legend. Mike Binder, everybody. Ooh, <sighs> yeah. Give it up. Give yeah. it up. Yeah. <laughs> and Mike brought his son, everybody. <sighs> Burt Binder. Welcome, guys. Fuck How you yeah. Doing, man? Welcome. Thanks for having us. No, thanks for coming on. Appreciate this is it. Great. Yeah. Bert's first is this your first podcast? This is my first podcast. Fuck, right. man. Popping the cherry. Yeah. We're gonna make you talk for the next hour. Is that cool? And we're gonna have you ask all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> we just like really make gonna edit it. <laughs> we're gonna make you, you edit it. I can't promise. It's Can you change the lighting sense. and everything too? Just so. Um, so my, I mean, Mike, I, I've known you for for uh, maybe eight months now. Yeah. Maybe Can I take these off because I, I take I feel, them off. I feel like I'm a kid playing a take video off. game. Yeah, Vinny, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna keep them on because I, I I just who's we? I don't speak French. Yeah, are you taking them off too? Yeah, I'm gonna, oh. yeah, I'm gonna keep them on. I, but I, yeah, we've known we've known each other no more than that since about june of last year oh yeah, yeah. wow it's been so, great yeah it goes yeah, by quick i really helped me get back into the swing i really credit you with a lot of uh, giving me good energy oh dude Getting back into this world uh, i was away from for 28 years that means a lot coming from you 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 uh i mean mike has done so much stuff. I mean, as far as specials go from HBO, I mean, did the comedy store documentary, produced movies. You did Blank Man. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, one yeah, of your first. That's, that's the one movie you always bring up. <laughs> I always bring up Blank Man because I remember when I was a kid, I was like, that's, that was so funny to me. It's like, you know, uh, Ray Donovan, all types of shows. And I mean, yeah. you're a legend, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, one of the nicest guys in the business. I say that sincerely. Really admire you, man. And your son, he's a piece of shit. All right. He's got problems. Here. <laughs> he's definitely going over the edge. Uh, your son, I, I have gotten to meet uh, Bert just from shows. You yeah, come to Mike's show supporting him. Backstage. How's it, how's it, how's it, is it fun watching him get back into stand up or? Yeah, it was fun the first couple of times. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man, let it begin. No, um, no it, it, it's fun. I mean, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy watching the the transformation. You know, like yeah. I just, you know, you see as from from where he started to where he is now. It's just like, it's a completely different set. But it's yeah, the same material. But it's like, it's really fine too. I mean, yeah. even for me, I've I see him all the time and just watching it like, oh, there's another tag. There's another tag. It's right. what made what's made me fall back in love with the art form because I I've really realized again when I was doing stand up. You don't know Tony. When I was, like, I started when I was like seventeen. You know, I was on the Tonight Show when I was, I think, nineteen. You know? Wow. I was, I was, I was, but I, I never worked that hard at it. Right. I didn't love the craft. I just loved having people laugh at me and meeting girls and getting making money and <laughs> figuring out a way to get into show business. You know, I didn't see it as a great. I loved comedians, but I don't remember having the love for it of working on the little pieces and the tags and the punchalism and the and working every day to make the set a little bit better. That, that I see guys like Vinny who who and and guys that I really respect like Burr and Chappelle and 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 God so many of them Christ they work so hard on their craft. Yeah. That, you know I <clears throat> I I feel like I don't even work nearly as hard as a I should be, and those guys do, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work. But I mean, we're putting it in. I see you at all the shows. You're doing all that. You're writing tons of material, doing all types of new bits, working on bits. The modern feel- comedian works much harder than because we were we were all looking for sitcoms and parts in movies, and which is what I did a lot. And then eventually, when I started directing and writing movies, I thought, God, this is so much harder work than stand up. <laughs> we only worked an hour a day. Wow. But and then I realized. Later, no, guys that really were successful like and stayed with their craft like Leno and 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 Letterman and or whatever, you know, they, they had shows or they just worked on their act, but you couldn't really take stand up as far then as you could today. It was rare that you someone would just wanted to be a stand up the rest of their life. But now that you guys all you work so hard on it. But you're you're working all the time, whether it's your Instagram or your podcast or you're working on your act. 
people work so much harder. Yeah. I, there's just more avenues to, <clears throat> to, there's more avenues to make money, I guess. But I don't, I mean, we talked about this a bunch of times. It's, you know, it's, you don't have those breaks that you used to though, either. Cause as a standup, if you got into, you know, tonight show or something like that, then all of a sudden, boom, you know, you became Seinfeld, but I mean, you could do the Tonight Show ten times, and your career's not the same. Right, that's right. But, or you get on a sitcom, and boom, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, you get on a sitcom, you go. Your neighbor goes. Someone said you were on a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's scary. Well, we the live in that story one. On that one is Tim Allen, who's one of my oldest friends. As you know, he did Home Improvement, and it was just like everybody in the country knew that show. And then he had another show for like five or six years afterwards called Last Man Standing. Yeah. And anytime you'd go in there with Tim, they'd say, hey, man, I miss you. How come you're not on TV anymore? And he'd say, I'm on TV every Wednesday night. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. People, but at that point, unless you watched that show, people didn't even know he was on television. And he constantly, I would hear people say, Man, you should be back on television. He'd go, I'm on television. Oh, people in the neighborhood are like, you're Tim, right? Yeah. yeah. You live next to that TikToker of yeah. the street, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you live next to that girl. JoJo fucking whatever. You live next to Vinny Fast. Yeah, Instagram, right. The guy that does the mouse in the squirrel. <laughs> Fuck. Wow, that's this pretty dude, well. man, this dude, he, he worked with me, I have to say, on the... Two and a half years on the stand-up comedy documentary. He was the co-producer, and we worked on it. Associate producer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That oh, give, give him too much praise. No, no, no. I'm uh, sure yeah, it was right. more You're work. We got you. I appreciate you promoting me. No, we downgraded <laughs> you at the time. You were the co-producer. Then we <laughs> <laughs> this saw how work hard you worked. No, but he he likes stand-up comedy. He doesn't love it like we do. Yeah, you don't want to do it. No. I mean, I just, I, I no, I mean, I, I guess it's just kind of like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just not really, you know. I grew up with him as a director, you know, and a filmmaker. You know, I, I I'd never seen him do stand up comedy. Oh. you know, so it's just like it wasn't in my world, you know, growing up. I, I was, you know, he, you know, he really introduced me to movies and showed me movies, and you know, that would be, you know, and I would go on sets and things like that, and. So I really fell in love with that. Cause, I mean, if he was still doing stand-up comedy throughout my childhood, I probably would have a different view on it. But to me, it's like I just never had exposure to it or really thought about it because it was kind of something he stopped before yeah. I was born. And uh, Do you feel like you're, it's grown on you a lot more now because you've been going to a bunch of shows? It, it is. You know, I just, I, I mean, I like watching it, and I always liked, you know, watching it. Like when I would, you know, I didn't seek it out. I didn't know everybody, but like, yeah, just, uh, I, 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 I didn't not like it. I just didn't. Look, look, he's had a great sense of timing. He's a funny kid, and he, he you know, he edited the, the the Bob Saget tribute we did. Oh, you did? He edited that. Oh, wow. He worked on the Bill Burr it, Red Rock special. You know, and wow. He, he's really, but, but, you either love it or you don't. You know, and. Both my kids, I think, just kind of go, oh, that's cute that you're doing stand-up comedy. Those guys, they're all just telling jokes. They don't, I don't really think, they, they, they love acting. They love, that's not what I thought. It's just, it's just a different, there's just a different, um, you know, like you like, your heroes are like, you know, Richard Pryor and like, you know, the, 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 the mythology of stand-up. Like those are people who, you know, are like the top to you. It's like, my Richard Pryor and all those people for me would be actors and filmmakers. You know what I mean? Like, so like, that's, that's kind of like a thing I've always like, you're, forget, I get, I get you're, what you're forgetting saying. about all the porn <clears throat> stars. I've met. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I get what you're saying. Cause I, I got into the film industry and I got my passion for it through my dad as well. Right. Um, and same thing. He would take me around to sets and I, you know, long story short, I played baseball for 13 years and that's what I wanted to do. And then I had a shoulder injury. So I had to find something else to do. And that's when I started going to sets with my dad and fell in love with editing. And now that's what I do. And I've been at Happy Madison for almost 10 years now, right. working in their editorial team. What, 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 do you work on, what, what program do you use? Usually uh, we mainly use Avid, sometimes dip our toes into Premiere, but I, I use all of them and proficient in all of them. Yeah. yeah. 
I prefer the newer ones, but just the way the industry is right now with yeah. the current main lead editors on a lot of projects, they're all avid guys. It's still avid, huh? Unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 that's my least favorite of all of them. It's clunky and it's slow. Yeah, right? it, whereas compared to, first of all, the new <laughs> Final like Cut. the opposite of an ad. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> what? Opposite of an ad. Oh, oh. Anti-plug. We're just yeah. shitting on different things. We don't plug anything. We just shit on stuff. Yeah. I'll way, tell you the drinks I don't like. not very good. What's that? That water's not very good. Oh, no? It doesn't taste like real water. Oh, well, good. They didn't pay, they didn't pay for us to put <laughs> them on there. I'm so. a water snob. I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm, not. <laughs> I'm, not. <laughs> I'm a spring water guy. Um, we, we didn't no, pay but, for this. But um, <laughs> I, I really do. I, I, I love the editing systems, but the new, like, for me, Adobe and mm-hmm. and even the new Final Cut is so much better than yeah. Avid. Yeah, I started using um, DaVinci Resolve, which is right. Yeah, it's like so Final cool. Cut and Premiere kind of had a baby. Oh, they is did. It good? Uh, yeah, is it hard to learn. I think it's easier, it's, honestly, and that's what all like the the pros use for like coloring and finishing. Yeah, the that's, movies. What they, they, that's what Noel, Noel uh, Mackinson did the color yeah. on her. What's yeah. the best one for multi camera? Uh, Premiere's really good at that. Uh, I haven't really explored multicam on DaVinci Resolve, but I'm sure they have a really good system implemented as Premier's well. Premiere's good at it. Yeah, Premiere's good. Premiere's uh, that's all I use. But he's your. But you're. Uh, I didn't realize you were an editor like that. Yeah, no, neither did I. It's, um, well, it's, you just kind of have to do everything. I feel like nowadays, you know, like I, I. What What would you say you primarily are like title wise when it comes to like production? I think I'm an actor. You know, actor? What I mean? I, I've been acting since I was 16. You okay, know, cool. I've been training as an actor. Uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, you know, for years I fought the hyphen. You know, I, I I was like really trying to just be like there was like a. I just wanted to be an actor. You know. Mm, yeah. Um, and so I thought like doing anything else would like make me not a real actor. Uh, so I fought that. You know, and then then I started writing just out of necessity. And then out of necessity directing and editing. I saw the trailer for a halfway to Armorello. Amarillo? Amarillo, you got it's it. Fucking great, dude. Armadildo. Yeah. Armadildos. <laughs> halfway house for Armadildos. Yeah. Dude, Point you were great off. in it. It was <laughs> awesome. It's a great little did you, movie. And you did you make did you produce it? You produced I helped. It, yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, you did? Yeah, but it's a great little movie, man. It's and, great. And, and, you know, that's what I was gonna say. He doesn't love stand up, but he loves comedy. And he made this great little comedy. And it's so, when I read the script, because he's written a lot of scripts. That's one thing I, I really commend him on. He writes a lot of scripts, whereas I know a lot of people write title pages in the first page. Yeah. But he finishes Good scripts. Good for you, man. He writes them. Nice. Got a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this one was different. This mm. one was, this just pulled you through. It had a great little story and so much heart, but so funny, you know? Did you release it on YouTube or... or? No, it's, Wait, so it's it, we're just finished. Uh, he just, so you didn't release it at all yet. It hasn't been out yet. He just oh. got, uh, he's got three offers for distribution. Nice. Yes. We yeah. just made a deal. Congrats, deal. dude. Are you allowed to say what platforms? Or uh, not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, yet. cool. I, I, I don't, but, but, but we'll talk after when but, the cameras are on. Yeah, yeah. It, that's really cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate. Yeah. It. And he, he's won a couple film festivals. And, One and, film festival. Wow. He's, oh, he's been in a couple film festivals. Oh, yeah. So do you guys want to just keep working together? Do you feel, do you like working with your dad, or is it weird? Is it weird? <laughs> no, I, I, I like working with my dad. I, I um, yeah, we get along. Yeah, we get along. I, I um, you know, get along. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> right, we get along. No, I mean, I, 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 I like working with my dad, which is good because no one else wants to seems to want to work with me. You know, I've, <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were gonna say I I, nobody yeah, wants yeah, to work with my dad. No, oh, no, that was your moment. I know. Fuck. No, he doesn't no. have the killer instinct <laughs> yet. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for all it. Right, all right, all right, you know, I, Do you ever make fun of your dad? First of all, your dad puts you in your act all the time. Does that freak well, you out? Not me. That's a fictional version. Yeah, of me. course, of course. Good save. Good save. It's good save. Good. That's me. No, I mean, like, like people will come to me and be like. I didn't know you had a girlfriend. I'd be like, I don't. I'm like, you think I like? When the fuck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, news to me. <laughs> news to me. Uh, um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I, 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 I jab at him to the point where I try not to because it, it almost feels like an instinct. Mm. Like, so I just, he does. He I have to fight. <laughs> I have to fight. Like I did. I feel the opportunity anytime. <laughs> I have to. I have to like. You don't I'm care. Also, I'm also an easy target. I set myself yeah. up a lot. At a certain point, it just, I just don't want to be a bully. 
Yeah. yeah. That's a weird But dynamic. you don't but you don't care he makes f- jokes about you though. I mean Listen, I mean I've, at this point like who gives a shit? Him, if it helps him fill out his time, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about all of my jokes about my family, I think I told you this, uh, is that um everyone in my family is always worried about jokes I tell about the other three. Right? <laughs> But the, the person, like, if I'll make a joke about my daughter, my son's going, oh, I don't think Molly's going to like that. Uh, and, and, or my wife's going to go, "That's you better run that by Molly. And then I run up by my daughter, and she's like, I love it, I love it. <laughs> and they, they're all just so afraid that I'm going to insult the other one. They're ne- But them, them, my wife is like, she's just used to it. Yeah, she's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, we're just, yeah, we're just resigned. How, how old are all of you? 28, my sister's 29. Yeah. Or she's no, she just turned thirty. Yeah, that's right. Um, six. Cool, it was a big thing there. So, so she's but she doesn't want to act or anything. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to do the stuff. Um, she with writes, you. She writes and she, but she kind of does a lot of things, and you know, she's got other focuses. And, yeah, you know, it's just um, it, it, it's it's this thing industry isn't her whole life. Yeah, like it is, like it is uh, yours. Like it is mine. He wrote this thing. And we made it, we had, it was, I have to say, it was a 10 day shoot okay. for a feature. Wow. It's tight. Are we, it was so tight, but it was the most fun I've had on a feature in years. Wow. It was just so, we did it so cool. And so. Which one? It was halfway down. Oh, halfway. Down. And oh, 10 days. Yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. And, uh, and we worked, he worked really hard. We had, but we had rehearsals. Oh, come in closer. There you go, yeah. All right. We, me That's too. why I'm not a stand-up. You're good. <laughs> we, we had rehearsal, we were, which I have always do in all my movies. I always rehearse. I always, I, I try to get two weeks rehearsal, but I usually end up with one week. Yeah, we right? I not get that. This is, I mean, 10 days for a shoot, though. Get, yeah, getting a rehearsal with a 10-day schedule, that's lucky. No, we had like two days. Two days of rehearsal, Two but days. but let me say something. Also, people had the script for like a month. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. This is what I've I've fought with studios, with production company, my whole career. If if you give me a week of rehearsal, I'm going to make every day. I'm going to yeah. save so much time. We're not going to be talking about things. And the thing that really changed it for me is I was working on this movie, Upside of Anger that I did with Kevin Costner and Joan Allen and all, all these people. And we were rehearsing. I think it was the first time I really talked someone into giving me a full rehearsal. And Kevin Costner came in one day. He said, you know, I have got so many ideas from the rehearsal last night. And I love this because usually I'm driving home after doing a take that's locked in. And I go, Oh man, I guess I had a great idea. I should. I wish I had another whack at the ball. And I realized that's what producers and directors and actors and directors need is they need time to do it and then let it sit for a little bit and come up with new ways to do. You know, and and, and you don't get that sometimes in television and movies because you're so rushed. Yeah. And if you just take a little time <clears throat> to do it. Everybody's already thought about all their stuff. They've tried it and they've worked it out. You've mashed the scenes out. And when you get on the set, everything moves so Mm. much faster. Wow. And that's what happened on this one. We just... Just rehearsed and then it was just easy from then on. Did you... There's definitely a lot of things watching it now that I would do. But it definitely helped to have rehearsals. I hate watching myself. I don't think I've seen one of my episodes of my podcast. (laughs) No, it's just, I you know, I, I can't watch times. myself, but I can listen to myself. Yeah, yeah, I can like, I, I listen to every single episode that we do, but I yeah. can't watch it. Same, same. Yeah, yeah it's easier. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's always, you You got to watch something two or three times till you can start really seeing what's there. It's yeah. You're going, yeah. Look at my nose. Look at my ear. Oh, well, my see, God. You know, as a professional editor, I'm used to like looking at something and then taking it apart. Piece right. by piece. And yeah. I don't want to do that with myself. That's right. Oh, <laughs> shit. Sense. I do that I on a daily basis. Down. I don't. Yeah. Need, I don't need to edit for that. I was gonna say I do that enough when I wake up in the morning. And see <laughs> yeah. myself in the mirror. But, I don't but, use but Avid. I use the mirror. We made was so much fun because it was just everybody just wanted to be there and, wanted, and it was just this fun little comedy. 
Did you improv too? A little bit? We were very tight. Like oh, really? A lot of... No improvs. You know, I mean, there was stuff that came up and there's stuff that we tried. Yeah. But it was... We mostly stuck to the script, you know? Um, yeah. There was like a... There was actually a scene, a whole sequence that we kind of thought of on the day. So, but it wasn't really improv. It was just kind of like quickly writing it and this, doing it. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think we really... I just Do want you, to apologize to the listeners. If you hear a barking, I left my wife in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Your wife needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm my wife. No, no. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, no, no, I'm just talking about my mother. <laughs> um... <laughs> Does it bother you when he tells jokes about your mom? It, does. it bothers me about my mom more than it bothers me about me. Oh, like, man. Like, oh, my son's a piece of shit. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. He'd be like, you know, his mother snores. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> God damn it. You never talk about mom snoring. <laughs> that's so cool that you guys uh, got that kind of relationship, well, though. I wrote another one that I'm going to direct. <clears throat> Yo, really? Yeah, yeah, really cool. Little, wow. Really cool. Nice. Little, when are you guys going to, when, when's that going down? Soon. Really? Yeah. Well, can you talk about it at all, or no? You gotta. Nah. It's called knocked. It's, called it's knocked. great. Knocked. Knocked. It's it's I call knocked. It, I, I call, uh, the producer actually gave me a great. He said it was Home Alone meets Reservoir Dogs, and it really is. Huh. It really yeah. is. I love it. It's just that's a, great, man. It's the greatest little. It's yeah. really dark and really violent and really crazy. But it's <laughs> it's this guy's. He, he he's showing a. Really nice home for re, uh, real estate purposes, mm-hmm. setting it up to be showed for his father's real estate company. And as he's doing it, the day before the the big opening of the sta- of the open house for this like beautiful home, yeah, like, someone knocks on the front door, to say, hey, "Can I use the phone?" I, I, my car. I broke see it. Out. And it, and, it's, <laughs> and, it, and it, one by one, he just lets people. In. The, the guy goes, "Oh God, my sister's here, my wife's here, my brother's here." And before long, it's like they've these guys that have just robbed a bank have taken over his house. That's a good idea. That's great. great. So nice. That was the, uh, the, uh, the long line. Log long log line. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that funny. That's a yeah, no, no. without giving it away. That's, that's pretty good. That's yeah. Um, no, that was good. I, I um, I uh, yeah. It's it's definitely like um, one that I'm I'm very happy that he's directing and not me because because yeah, there's a lot more stuff. Just it's just a bigger scale, you know, and it's one that you know I'm. It's gonna be great though. So, of all your dad's stuff that he's done, work. What is it, is it like your favorite of Mike stuff? Um, you know, I re- like uh, I I probably should have a funny answer to this, but I really like the Search for John Gissing. I think that that's probably uh, it's a that's a comedy with Alan Rickman. Oh wow! Um, I, mean, I just I love that movie. I think it's just like it's just a great concept. It's a great you know it's just funny. It's like it's simple. It's you know um, it's kind of the closest. Thing. Like him and I have very different tastes and very different. Like I'm more genre. He's more, yeah. you know, comedy, like straight, you know. So he, that's probably the closest to something that like I would write of your of that you've yeah, done. I would that say that and um, and Blank Man, obviously. No. Blank Man. No, I love. I watched. Dude, it, I watched I saw, it recently. I mean, like, <laughs> I, love, I forget, like that movie. It's oh, fucking hilarious. It's fucking great. It's you know what, Mike? They don't make fucking. We talk about this all the time. So they don't make good. comedies that are just silly and ridiculous anymore. No, but what no, is I, that? I wouldn't have if it went for Damon Wayans. You know, I, uh, I, I was I, Damon was an old friend of mine. I, I know the Wayans <laughs> guys since my beginning, and when I went to the Century City AMC, I had a, a movie just opening there. This was you guys probably weren't even born. I don't know, probably, but uh, it was called Indian Summer. It was a movie with Alan Arkin, yeah, and Bill Paxton. And, I know it, and. Uh, and it was a touchstone film, Disney film, and it was in the theater. So I wanted to see it with an audience. And as that, it, it it was had a really good opening weekend, you know. So I was really excited. So I was going around to the, which is something that that's amazing. We all used to do, you know, when our movies came out there. They were in theaters that you'd ride around town to the different theaters. You, you know? just watch the movie over and over again. You know, well, you'd, you'd try to just see the the audience reaction. You'd, even if you stay for twenty minutes and and go to the next theater, but but um. 
As I'm walking out, Damon walks out. As I'm as the crowd's going out, it's Damon. He goes, "Oh man, I just came to see your movie. It was great." And uh, I got it. I'm doing a movie at Sony that I want. We want to offer you. And and uh, and that's the first time you met him, or you no, just oh you just saw. Him. No, I'd known him from the store and the improv oh, for yeah. years. You know. He was there checking out my movie. Wow. It was, and, uh, and you know, he was like, and everybody in my life at the time said, you can't do blank, man. <laughs> you didn't write it. It's a, it's a Damon Wayne's movie. And Damon Wayne's, what people don't, I mean, at the time, he was like going to be the new Eddie Murphy. He had, had three big box office hits in a row. Mm. And he was making all these studio films. And I was making these little, you know, Indian summer was $9 million. Wow. Blank man at the time was $35 million, which is probably seventy now, right? Yeah. And it was a big Sony film. And all of Damon's, and, and, but they were going, if this goes bad, you're going to, it's going to kill your career. And I said, why? I'm directing a friend's movie. It's like produ- helping a friend produce his album or something. I said, no, it isn't. <laughs> and I didn't know I'd only done two little movies. They were my own movies, just an extension of my stand-up, really. And I figured I didn't know. I didn't. I was insulated from the business, you know. I, but then I got these big managers and agents, and this thing is gonna kill you if it bombs. You're gonna be in director's jail, which I didn't know what it was. And the movie came out. We worked on it for a year. It was a, really such a great year we, we, we all got along so well and Damon and I so many people didn't want me to do it that other directors and studio executives called me and told me not to do it well oh, wow. my agents were telling calling saying oh this little, Damon's hard to work with everybody doesn't no one gets along with Damon and I go this is my friend we, it was so much fun and you said I'm gonna make this movie because one day my son is gonna be like that's the fucking one dad that's the one <laughs> But but but, but uh, it came out and bombed. It tested through the roof. Really? It came out and it bombed. It, I didn't work for three years. Nuh-uh. I did not get another movie made for three years. And wow. this was in a period when I was always making movies. Holy right? shit. And and um, it was so bad it killed my career. It was, I'm telling you, it, 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 at the time, everybody made fun of me. Even when I had movies come out that do well, they went, but yeah, but he's also the guy that did Blank Man. Oh. And then, over the years, it just built a following on cable and, 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 and network and streaming, you know? And then it, wow. I was going to ask, what are your thoughts on like the, the business nowadays, whereas, you know, back when you're doing Blank Man, it's really, the, you know, you, you have to have a successful movie come out, whereas it seems like nowadays, it's more about, quantity over quality if i might say so well i don't think it's much as much that but he's more old-fashioned than me he's like yeah. he wants to make movies that are, you know movie theater i don't i don't, I don't care <laughs> I, I i to me yeah i just want to work and i and I, I would i'm happy making movies that come right yeah. out onto netflix or hbo or you know I, I don't care yeah i i actually would love it if i could build my own follow and like make little movies like the way people make podcasts and just right. put it up myself on my own yeah. site. You know, I don't, I don't need that. I don't re- have any more reverence left for the, the theater experience. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is because I've always had such great theaters in my house, you know, <laughs> or so, you know, yeah. big screens and I know how, but I, I, I'm, I'm not a purist like that. I asked your, we were smoking cigars one day and I asked him, like if he wants to produce or direct other movies. And he said, you know what? I really don't have the same interest. I just want to make my son's movies. Is what he told me. So uh, that's for me. Says, it's a lot. That's what he said. And then, and then he, and then he finished his cigar and he said, I have, I actually, I changed my, my mind. Even, <laughs> even movie, even TV shows, uh, you know, I, I just, my passion right now is stand up comedy and stand up world. This, this platform I'm building, you know, it's the best. And I, and I just, his passion is, so I really, you know, I really want to direct his movie. And then I wrote a movie for Sandler that I really want to do, you know? Oh, nice. And Sandler and I are always say, okay, we're going to make another movie together. And, and I believe that I just, and at that point, that's something I would do. But other than that, I'm not really, I'm not really pushing to do 
movies anymore. That's I, impressive. He goes, you and Sandler is it. Yeah. It's it. You're up there. That oh, I think wonderful. he's incredibly talented. You are. I, I really do. I, I, where do you see the whole movie? When you, I, I think I sent you the link. I got yeah. He did such a good job on it. It, it was just and. Not only that, not only him, but the actors that are in it. Like Frank Castillo's in it. Oh, yeah, I Aaron saw that. Great, yeah. How funny is that? Yeah, yeah. Did you know him or you knew him? I knew well, we did the con I knew him from the conversation. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of the people in Yeah, I saw him in the trailer. And yeah. Felicia Michaels. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Also the the, the cinematographer Josh Joshua Smith uh worked on the comedy store documentary and uh, the the sound guy Bill White. Yeah, yeah, okay. He doesn't love comedians, but I will say he loves Casper. Even the other night we were driving home from the thing, he goes, "Hey, Vinny would be great in not not." Time. Yeah. Like, he was throwing all these. Hey, roles. Bert, <laughs> come on, baby. <laughs> Just the way he Did is. I say I love your acting? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he does. He thinks like Flattery that. Larry will get you anything. He he he, th- he doesn't he doesn't love the the art of standup, but but he does what. We always, whenever we're talking casting, he goes, what about this guy? And what about that guy? And I love stand-up. I just don't love me, the idea of me doing, doing stand-up. It. You know, I, like you said, like, I like, oh, he likes comedy. Like, I, yeah, I like being funny if I have two and a half years to prepare it. You know what I mean? Like, if I can edit it for two See, years. I mean, you're, you're saying you're, you do acting. So I was going to ask, is your, I guess, your, your, what's driving you away from doing stand-up? Is it? It's not so much the performative side of things; it's the preparing the content for it. Or, yeah, I mean, again, I, and also some of it might go back to what I was saying about fighting the hyphenate thing. Like, I, right. I there is part of me that just want it's about perception. Like, I feel like a lot of times, like this industry is like kind of decides your one thing. This right. is what you are, you know. And even as an even if you're just an actor, it's like, well, are you a comedian, a comic actor, mm-hmm. or are you a serious actor? It's like. So then it's just like the idea of like doing anything else. Like I'm, I, I get nervous about doing it because I just want to be seen as an actor. You know what I mean? So right. Well, for me, it's uh, I I don't like doing in front of camera work just because I'm so self conscious about myself. So like even doing this podcast for an example is taking me really out of my comfort zone, which is something I've been trying to work on to get more comfortable with. Right. Um, but that's why I like doing editing because it's like I feel like one of the more if not the most isolating part of a production really, that you could editing do. Editing is fun. Editing, yeah. I gotta be honest, was my favorite part. I, I love it. I mean, I've, I was always into like Legos and everything, so I love yeah, exactly. putting things together and making it into something else. I totally agree. And not yeah. only that, the editing is the final rewrite. Yeah. And and especially then when you there's so much you can do and you sit there and go, oh, I love this. I love this. And, 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 and you can really take your time. It is a really cool thing. Yeah. It has a lot to do with beats. It has a lot yeah. to do with everything. It makes and or yes. breaks a yeah. film or TV, just period. But I f- to go back to that, it's like you almost can't just do one thing anymore, you know? Like, yeah. it's, I mean, yeah. I guess you could just be an editor, but, it's you know. Tough. I it's tough. I mean, I told you this before, but my, my career goals aren't just be an editor and end there. It's I want to get into directing pretty soon and then producing and then have my own production company or post-production company when I'm older, like when I have my family, so I'll have that running and then I could direct my own projects that I want yeah, to do. It, it, you have, I think you have to wear a lot of hats nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, I mean, I, I met, I met an agent, <clears throat> his specific new department at this big agency is only signing across. They sign people, uh, that you're, have to be across the board. You have to be a writer. Well, you have to have a podcast. You have to be a stand up. You have right. to be an actor. Otherwise, you're, they won't sign you. And you have to juggle. <laughs> and you by have to the juggle. way, you know, do OnlyFans. It's, it's, it's changed. I will say that if anything, one of the reasons why I don't think my career might not have been bigger would have been is because I was so spread thin because I did so many things. And unless you just pop in one thing, People go, well, I don't know what he is. Agents to me, I don't know what you do. You, you're an actor, you're a comedian, you're a writer, you're a director, you're a producer. And now that's such an asset. Yeah. You were just ahead of the curve. Yeah. 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 You yeah. are ahead of the curve. Trailblazer. Yeah. Your son's yeah. behind the curve. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, yeah. He's got to act. We No, you know what? You're, you're editing. That's, I mean, yeah, I mean I, now you want to direct. It's the like. The thing is, it's like, it's whether or not. I want to or whether or not like that's what I really want to do. It's like, mm-hmm. it's what you got to do. 
You know what I mean? Like I yeah. can be like trying to be this, you know, pure like just an actor, actor, and then I'll be fifty, like waiting for an opportunity. Like the days of just walking into an audition room and getting discovered and on a show. Like you were talking about the Tonight Show. Like, you know, it's like it's the same thing for actors. Like you could get a part on a show and then like be a movie star. You know what I mean? Like like that doesn't really happen anymore. It's, it's so do you, you have do you feel like you have this obligation then to pick up these other roles because you are weary of falling into that in a lot in a lot of ways I kind of look at it like cooking like I'll mm-hmm. like acting is eating you know what I mean that's the meal right and it's like if no one's gonna cook for me I'll cook for myself you know Got and it. that's okay. directing and writing and it's like and until I don't have to cook for myself mm-hmm. anymore that's what I gotta do you know so right but I also think it's great like just when you said you have plans like you know up this and then I want to do that I think it's important for performers and to to have that and I think it's really important and and could we get a, maybe a heavier <laughs> bottle of water yeah. I just, we, I just I, can, 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 is there, you don't have any little people here I was gonna get you one of those big old gallon buckets just to see I was gonna say yeah. um <laughs> but 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 that's one thing I love about Vinny, like man. I, I I love seeing guys. What am I? I love being back in stand up. I talk about this a lot because I meet guys, people that are so talented and fresh. But but this guy, I look at these little Instagram pieces he makes, <laughs> and then I look at his stand up, and I look at every, and I just think here. And and you talk to him for like as you know for like an hour, and he's got like. 11 plans and and, and, <laughs> and then I think we should just revolutionize Instagram and change it and make it so that you can have it put in your ear. You I know, got fucking ADD out, the, yeah. out the ass. Yeah. Oh that's man. Great. I love that. I mean, I dude, that. that's to me, that's what the industry needs you to be today. It needs you to Fuck. understand that when w- if something closes down, it's not going to close you down because you're going to come up with a new road into town. Yeah. You know, also though, as a creative person, sorry not to cut you off. I, the, I, I, I feel like, cause you said earlier, you, you're like, I want to be an actor and that's what I want. And that's great. But even as a creative, even, even as a creative person, you eventually, f- you feel like I want more. Like he's an editor and then he realizes I enjoy it, but I want to direct. And it's right. like, look at Ben Affleck, dude. That guy's, I mean, right. he's producing. Ed, I, mean, I used him as an example. Director. Right. Well, I'm the opposite. Like, I'm just like. You like, just want to act and not anything else. Well, I, I like, I do want to, obviously, like, I, look, I love storytelling. You know what I mean? I love filmmaking. Yeah. I want to direct. You know what I mean? I want to write. I want to direct. But I, I just, I just want to, you know, I just, I am. You know, it's just like it, it. It's what I've been studying for the last eleven years. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just like it's just like it's just what I do. You know, and it's like, you know, so I just I do want, you know, like you say, like you you when you're so when you the creativity and then you get to a point where you want more. It's like I'm not at that point yet. You know what I mean? Like I just I want. I think I want. Well, you know. Kevin Smith said, "If you want to make it, make it. You gotta. I you got." J- Judd Apatow said to Jason Siegel, "Nobody else is going to play you better than you. You gotta you make shit for yourself. That's how you really. Br- I mean, I'm in the same position. I like to act. I haven't done it a ton. Most of my life has all been stand up, right. but I I'm right now working on writing, producing, and acting in a movie that he's going to be a director on as well. Oh, wow. Like, uh, we're, and we're going to." No, I'm not directing. Another director and him. I'm like associate directing with right, the lead right. director, and then I also be doing the post production stuff for it. Yeah, Great. and and yeah. We, we'll find something to put you in there too. Because what's, the, what's the what's the movie? Can you talk about it? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. it's a porn. Bird. It's a so, por- yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a ten it, minute. How comfortable are you with full? And you said there's a role. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ten minute porn. Uh, but it's, it's it. We'll talk we're, about we're, it after we're this. Like pre pre. Yeah. Right now. Well, if you guys won't tell me about your movie, I'll tell you about this one I thought of. This <laughs> podcast, right? <laughs> oh, nice. What What would you say? Like, Vinny asked me this right before everyone showed up today. Uh, what, what are your, like your top three comedies? Because I'll just say what mine are. Don't yeah. influence your answer off of my answer. Um, but I have Christmas Vacation. Uh, 
it's a sentimental movie for me. I watch it every Christmas morning with my dad and my sister. Right. Um, Step Brothers, and then the third place is tied with Animal House and Caddyshack and Blank Man. And Blank Man. <laughs> yeah, well, those are good. Those are good comedies. Yeah. Great, right? That's um. Okay, so I. This is hard because it's, it's like a tough I, one. I feel like I gotta pick one Will Ferrell one. Like mm-hmm. I can't pick like like it could easily be all three. Right. Just because right. I kind of grew up with it. Um. This is a weird pick, but I really love that movie, The Other Guys. Oh, Mark with Mark Wahlberg? Wahlberg? Yeah, yeah, Ferrell, I think, yeah. I don't know why. It's just so fun. Like, I can watch that movie over and over, and, and, and I just I think it works as a great action movie, too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is something I really like in comedies. Like, I th- we were talking on the way over here. Like, I love when a comedy works as, like, a secondary genre. Right, yeah. Um, and um, I like uh, another one. I don't know if it's a comedy, but Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Like, I guess oh. it's technically a comedy. It makes me fun. Yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah. My favorite comedy, Shawshank Redemption. Loved it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, Just yeah. keeps getting darker. <laughs> um, no, but the... Um, and then the, You know, I, this might just be, re- like, because I just watched it recently, but it's such a well-made movie, Tropic Thunder. Oh, it man. Yeah. so good. It's good. And, like, ben, but also Zoolander. Like, Ben Stiller is, like... Yeah. yeah. See, you like the silly shit. I love the See? silly shit. Goofier the better. I love when someone just... Yeah, take me out of it. Yeah, I just, I love about? Mike, yeah. you got well, three my favorites? My first one is Christmas Vacation because I would watch it with your dad every night. Every <laughs> Christmas <laughs> night. You were that other guy. Yeah, okay. I was the other guy. <laughs> that makes sense. I always asked him. He just said it was Santa Claus. So, uh, uh, yeah, Santa, Santa Claus is Jewish. <laughs> the more you know, <laughs> the more you know. No, I, I, mine are different. Mine are, mine are, my favorite comedies are... Annie Hall, you know, and and Diner mm. would be probably one of my favorites. And um, Dave, Ivan Reitman's comedy Dave with Kevin Klein. Dave, I don't. Oh, it's amazing! I don't it's, think I've seen he, Dave. He plays the guy that impersonates the president in public appearances, and then the president gets sick, and he has to become the president. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great co- comedy. Wow! It's like almost like an old. Preston Sturge, a modern version of a Preston Sturgis comedy, you know, and I just, uh, Dave and Diner and Annie Hall, I think those are like my three. Mine would have to be uh, Christmas Vacation, um, Halfway to Armarillo, and uh, Shawshank Redemption. And and also the sequel, Halfway to Armarillo. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, you, you, by the way, you said, uh, uh, who's the other, you didn't, who's the other guys in Halfway to Amarillo? Um, The kind of person I wrote. A friend of mine, friend of ours, Peter Giles, mm. just a great, great actor. Great actor. Um, he's like a just, he's so funny, but also can get he's done so a bunch serious. of Seinfelds and sitcoms and mm. movies. He's, he's, he's Seinfeld. Did he do it? Yeah, he, he might have done. Or that. Friends, Friends. I mean, he did Friends. He, well, he's also Brooklyn Nine Nine. He was. Like, oh yeah! He's wow. Been in everything. But he's he's so talented. He can do. He's kind of like Brian Cranston in the sense that he can kind of just do anything. Yeah. Like, you know. Um. And so I just I kind of wrote. Him, he's like the 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 bad kid, the, the deep corrupt sheriff, you know. And I just kind of wrote it for him. Just, he's amazing. In it. Wow, you know, he's the blonde cowboy. Yeah, the and, sheriff. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that, that was easy. And then I, I actually, he's great. The other one I wrote for another actor who, due to scheduling things at the eleventh hour, just sort of dropped out. So, but that actor actually recommended Luke Jones, who plays Eli West, and uh, so so he came in like four days. No, no Mike Binder cameos or what? No, I tried. He tried. Nothing. You didn't want to be in his movie? He was going to do the, ca- <laughs> I wanted him to do the, which is now a comedian named Bob Nickman did a cameo. Oh. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. I wanted you to do Dude, it. you guys could do a movie together with each other. cheap. <laughs> yeah, know your value. That's fair. That's, fair. <laughs> that's awesome, man. How about, how? It's oh, great. Wait. Michaels and Lindsay G. Smith. Uh, yeah. You know, also amazingly flew out. She she lives in New York. Lindsay, Lindsay was in this movie I did, Black or White, with Kevin Costner and Octavia Spencer. Yeah. And she uh, had a smaller part in that, but she was fantastic. Wow. And I was just always thinking, God, we got to find something else for her. She's so talented. And um, Bert said, hey, what about her for this? Uh, 
was your idea. It was? Yeah, you read the script and um like before you had you had kind of, I kind of talked to you about it and you, you know, you hadn't read the script and you were kind of like um uh, we're just going to do all right, we'll do this with just just local actors, like local lo- everybody and then you read it and you're like, "What about Lindsay?" I'm like, "Doesn't she live in New Orleans?" <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but fuck, fuck it. We'll fly her out. We'll wow. Her out. And, and he called her like right then. And, and, and she got on the phone. And he told her about it. She agreed to do it. Look at that. We'll fly her out. We'll put her at a Motel 6. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. But, uh, but yeah, so it's like his, he broke his own rule. Like, wow. She's so good, though. Yeah. She's yeah. She, she, she's major talent. Yeah, it was weird. She's really talented. And, and she's, she's a superstar we were able to get. Awesome. It's just I just admire the fact that you guys can work together and also have such a great relationship. You know, some people don't have a good relationship with their parents at all. Right. So, you know, we're kids for that matter. But it's, you know, I mean, Doesn't you guys should, or should be grateful. Your sister's in the business, right? Yeah, she's um, she's relatively newer into it, but she she's doing the producing side of things. Um because one time I had a meeting with your dad at his office, and my daughter was working with me for the time, mm-hmm. at the time, and he goes, "I love that you work with your daughter. I, I don't work with my daughter." Oh yeah, I want to work with my daughters. I think maybe what he said. Yeah, yeah. She she just uh, relatively recently um, started producing movies and getting into that, and you know, exec producing and associate producing. Note, he goes, "I don't want to work with my son." I, I, wor- <laughs> I worked. I worked with her actually on um, one of the last independent movies I cut. I was, I was lead editor for that. And she Which was, the, uh, um, it's called Billy Knight. We're in post oh, right now. Uh, Al Pacino. Alec Roth yeah. Alec Roth. Did that. I, yeah, know, yeah. I know him from high school. Yeah. I, I've known him from high school oh, too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did. He went to cross. Oh, I didn't go to crossroads, but yeah. I, he was friends with a lot of people. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's so awesome. I, I was the editor on that. And, uh, my that's sister great. was an exec producer, Al Pacino, Charlie Heaton, Diana Silvers, or like the mains in it. That's great. Nick Scheinberg produced that, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, it was cool working with being able to work with my sister and then I've been doing it longer than she has, even though I'm the younger sibling. Um, mm-hmm. but it's, it's kind of cool how our naturally our career paths just kind of yeah, cross. No, like great. That. Yeah, that's great. It's really great. It's, uh, I've, you know, also being a happy Madison, it's kind of under the Netflix umbrella because of the distribution yeah. deals and production deals and everything. So I was going to ask you, do you have any like reservations working with your dad because of the the opinions that other people might have against you, like you like the nepotism, the thing? nepotism thing, and like, oh, you're only here because of your dad, like that type well, of stuff. Because personally, I've had to deal with it, but I've been right. dealing with it for so long, it doesn't bother me anymore. I just let my work show for itself. Well, look, I, like I said before, I've been doing this since I was 16, right? You know, and there's a lot of people that don't even know I'm an actor. So, if nepotism was really that strong. I think I'd probably be a lot further along. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, but, um, so, you know, 11 years, you think nepotism. Would, but, I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, it does, it, it does help, you know, at the, like, working with him, like, I mean, like, it, it does help. So I just got to work harder. Yeah, but yeah. people also forget, like, you learn so much shit. Like, you're, it's like you're going through school. Like, my dad was a doctor. Um, now, I am actually a d- doctor as well. Uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> by default. No, you can do surgery on the I side. Can, I've, 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 no, no, get, no, just lay on the table. I'll do open heart. Yeah, yeah. No, but I feel like, I, I mean, like, I'm not, I don't know shit. I'm not even that smart compared to my dad, how he was. Like, he was just so intelligent. Book smart, you know? Right. But I learned so much fucking stuff that I, I could speak in that, like, l- lingo. Medically, I feel like, you know, I probably know more than general people do well, just from my dad. So I, I have pictures of him from every form time of his age on a set next to my, the camera with me and see that's how you learn like right. dude it, it, you'll never get a better experience i mean people have to pay for acting classes go go to i mean this is all a self-taught thing you don't just go to a fucking school for stand-up comedy and then become a stand-up you just learn it you do it you keep doing it until you get good you can't just go to college for 14 years to be a, like a doctor right. you gotta just fucking go out there and get it you know and so let me say something about nepotism because it, cause it takes a lot of crap. But first of all, I've never seen anybody whose parents were successful in this industry succeed who didn't have talent. I've seen a lot of people whose parents were successful not do well. 
It, so sometimes it works against you, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, it's easy to go, well, yeah, he and he and he, she, look at her, she got, well, her father was a movie star. You're picking, you're picking out the winners. There's so many people whose parents who are second generation show business in this town never made it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. one of my fears is like, that's the other flip side of nepotism is like the pressure, like you kind of have to succeed or else you're going to be like the, the fucking yeah, nepotism. I was going to say, I, I use it as encouragement to better my craft right. and and stay honed in on what I do because mm-hmm. I'm like it's almost like I have an audience watching me even yeah. though even though most likely no one gives a shit but uh it feels if like you're yeah. not good you're not gonna stick around yeah. I will tell you and I'm not gonna say who when we were working on 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 uh, a film we were working on we had a very very famous guy's son who worked was a friend of mine asked his for his son if he could get a job and this guy is huge okay and in the field and i said he's a friend of mine i want to do him a favor we put him on he didn't do a good job he didn't last <laughs> every I, I was the last one to realize it <laughs> but everyone was telling me this guy's he's not doing a good job mm-hmm. if you're not doing a good job it doesn't matter how you got in the door because I listen. I happen to know Adam Sandler very well. I know this Happy Madison world very well. If you weren't cutting it, Adam, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> if, no, Adam would not have had a problem going. Hey, hey, buddy, hey, Ted. Uh, we don't need him anymore. Something else, or something's come up. He, he, he just he's not that nice of a guy. He can't afford to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what people don't realize about. Nepotism, it gets you in the door. It doesn't keep you in the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it shows. I mean, shit. I, I saw the trailer. I, I go, your dad couldn't be this good. No, it's <laughs> the type of thing where it's like, it's almost it's almost one of those things that's useless. Like, I like what, like what I can't even, like, it's almost useless to have an opinion because it's like, what, I'm never going to be not his son. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and what am I going to do? Like, not... Dude, like I don't know how to do anything else. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And I will tell you, <laughs> when, be, when he told me he wanted to be an actor, yeah, I went, oh. <laughs> honestly, it was my first reaction. Why do you want to go in this business? And then when I saw him work, I went, oh man, he's good. Wow, he's good. He's going to do well. And I knew immediately he was going to do well. And I know he's he's going to do great. I mean, he's 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 going to this guy's going to do really well. Look at that. Do better than I did. Look at that. I believe it too. I believe Noct is going to be awesome. And I believe that I'm going to, I believe that my role in there is going to do really well as, as well. Listen, and I'm going to give you a role and I'm going to let you cut it. Oh. You, know, you cut keep it, it out. We'll keep it in the family. <laughs> hey, hey, but, but you got to play a guy in a dress with his head shaved Fuck, and, 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 and his nose cut off. No, no, that's not your role anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have that, dude, I do that at home. So yeah, fuck yeah, right. I'm wearing the bra right now. You want to see it? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for your. I'm excited for your next steps. Yeah, it's exciting. Both of you guys, it's great. It's um, great. And I'll tell you, man, I'm just a happy dude. You know, I just, I just love what I'm doing now, and I, I love where the industry is now. I love, I love that this can be happening. And, you know that, you know. I was watching. This is a bad example, but I was watching. Megan Kelly has this show on YouTube right now. It's a huge hit. What's the show? It's called she the Megan the Megan Kelly Show. She got fired from two bi- big networks, and she and she was talking tonight about getting fired, and she said it was the best thing that ever happened to me because now and she has this little thing set up in her house and she does her show and it looks like network quality mm, yeah. but she's home with her kids all the time and you can you can work through any chuck hole in this industry now and just do your thing and i know you i've only like i say i've only known you about a year or whatever i already know already that nothing's gonna stop you Thanks. Nice. And that'd be the next Megan Kelly. I, yeah, I yeah, would yeah. love to just work yeah. from home in my underwear. That'd yeah. be awesome. That's you, what I'm saying. You do work from home in your underwear. I do, but <laughs> I would right. like to make money problem. doing that. Are you one. kidding? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. But, yeah. but, but you, you know, just this notion of anybody can do as long as it's good work. I, I, I've, I've really realized, and I was talking about this the other day, 
your only job as a comedian, I don't know, as an editor, a producer, director, but it's just to reach for greatness. Mm. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just have to go, how do I be, do the best version of my craft? And everything works out when you do when you think about it that way. And yeah. It takes time to realize that. But the world we're in now is even more open to that. When I see these guys doing their own specials and putting it on YouTube and their own shows and making their own thing, is they're just they're they're reaching for greatness. And 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 they find their audience. But do you think that there's potentially like a flip side to that of like there used to be like because you kind of needed to impress the people, or there was you know by virtue by virtue of that you kind of like had to kind of cook for so long, and like there might be some people that could just put anything out there that might maybe not be ready, or like what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, it happens all the time. I put shit out that's not ready all the time. Oh, <laughs> I'm about to put out my next special. <laughs> Yeah, the next special I put out. It's not it's yeah. called Not Ready. Right. You know what? Here's the thing about it all, though, too, is... Ah, fuck. We're diving into it. But I, I'm like... It, it, it's Content is king. Right. And you got to keep putting shit out there. And now it's so over ever saturated and people have no attention spans that if you don't put it out, are you ever going to? Like, with stand-up, I keep, keep working on my stand-up, keep working on... I, be, I started stand-up... 20 years ago, I've been doing it religiously for 13 and I have, I was scared to put out my comp, my comedy at all. Cause I was like, I want to save it so I could put a special out or maybe that's how I got a special was you save it and then you got a special. Right. Now it doesn't even matter. Dude, people are, are posting clips. There's people that have been doing comedy five years to get the tour and, and it's cause they're posting. So here I am going, Oh, and I'm sick of my material. So I should have been putting it out anyways. Cause I'm like, it's, right. all, uh, you know, and it's, I don't know. But you've you, been doing this for 13 years. Like, like, I, like you're polished and ready. Like, I, you know, I think about like, like if you had put stuff online in your first year of doing stand up, like if you were like six months into it now and you were like, maybe thought you were better than you were, you know, and you just put all your shit online, you know, like I look at like some of my like, like audition tapes from like 10 years ago. <laughs> it's like there's people who put their audition tapes, like have, you know, they put all their self tapes on, on their Instagram or whatever. And I'm just like, if I put like my early ones on, you know what I mean? Like I almost, in a lot of ways, like I think that it's, it's too easy to put, put shit out there. Put yourself out there. You know? I mean, I feel like that's the nature of social media and virility and, and algorithms now of how you grow your platforms is you have to just do like the shotgun effect, just throw out as much as you can until something catches. Right. Because I mean, if you're if you're banking your entire platform growth on, say one one joke that you've been working on for months and it doesn't hit, then what? It's not like it's going to magically hit. I totally agree. There yeah. was that great saying, uh, uh, "Perfect is the enemy of good." Yeah, you know, and it, I I just think if so, if you put out something early, it doesn't hit. It's okay. You go on to the next one. You know. Right. And people don't go, wow, look at this. 12 years ago, it was bad. Right. I just, I, I don't mean like, like, like if I were to put something out now, that's like not good. Like it would at least be something I know that I tried and like had, was qualified to make or whatever. But like, mm. like when I was really green, you know, if I just like had like the ability to just put shit out there, like I, I don't know if I would want that even existing on yeah. Well, you're polished enough. You've been doing it since you were 16. You've got a hell of a dad coach and he's, he's putting you through, he's putting you, he puts you through the ringer, I'm sure, but he taught you a lot and I'm happy you're both working together, man. And I, I admire the, I love your dad. I met you through a whole bunch of shows now going, but I, I do, I, I really, really respect him as a person and as a friend and you have grown to be a friend and now even a better friend now that I'm in your movie. So yeah. that's really cool. But, <laughs> I had but, to, I'm sorry, Bert. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Now we're stuck with them. And now you're fine. <laughs> but I, I, now you're stuck with two of us. <laughs> I'm proud. I'm proud of you guys just, you know, growing together, 
not only with the relationship, but this, professionally. I really appreciate I'm, I'm you guys happy for you guys in. having this. this yeah. Is so bad. Like, Do you guys want to plug anything before we go? You want you want to tell where you called halfway to Amarillo. Halfway, oh, the floor is yours. Take it. Yeah, away. halfway to Amarillo. No, I, uh, I don't have two things just yet. I want to cl- plug. I'll be at the Comedy Crock Pot this Saturday <laughs> night in Tempe, Arizona, in the outskirts. Two shows, seven and twelve. Is there really a comedy crock pot? I was going to say, I go, what kind of st- comedy clubs do they have now on day? <laughs> you said plug it. It's Tempe. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. I haven't heard it. I, I Mike, what are your socials? Mike, the Mike Binder? The Mike Binder. The Mike Binder. On Instagram. Oh, yeah, I do want Check. to plug John Fawcett's uh, gas station. <laughs> John. Yeah, that's right. John Fawcett's. Nice. Great service. Um, decent, like, Reasonable prices. Fuck yeah. Our shop. sponsor's a gas station. Okay, yeah, go from great. decent to reasonable prices. Yeah, no, I mean, what? <laughs> you no, thought about it. No decently priced <laughs> Exactly, right now, yeah. But they're, they're looking out for you. Yeah, yeah. As they can. John Foss is... Uh, <laughs> and what's your, let me, before I... What, what's, what's your dream for this podcast? Where, where do you guys want to see this go? You know... Event, I mean, it could eventually be a, sh- a series somewhere, but I we just wanted to grow where it's our, our own thing that we consistently have a shitload of viewers and we can make money. You know, I have a lot of friends making a lot of money doing podcasts, and yeah. we have. I, I just like having good conversations with good people. Yeah, well, that's the better answer. Yeah, I want to make a Wait, shitload of money. Can we cut money. that? I and don't uh, care. I don't hey, care about hey, the dude, work. I, yin or, and yang. You said the yin and yang. Right. It's yin and yang. See, the <laughs> thing is, I, I, everybody we have on all the time, I like hanging out with. I like the that's fact that we have something original. <laughs> but the the best thing about this is we get to create our own shit. This is us being in creative control. Of, you had me when you yeah. said I could bring my son. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> how, how cool is it, though, that you like you get to do a podcast with your son? You never even done it. one. I love yeah, it. This is my I first. love it. Well, you did a great job, man. No one's ever asked me a question. <laughs> oh. Actually, so. There you go. We've what the it. fuck? I ask you questions all the time, Bert. Uh, no, he means like I don't answer because it's not on camera. So. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I'll... Uh, I'm gonna, can we're can gonna, I tell you what his first thing on camera ever was? Though, and I'll let you go. You mm-hmm. can cut it out. Yeah, I was making. <laughs> I was making. A, I was making a movie in uh, in London with Colin Firth, and we we were doing shooting this scene by the Hyde Park, and he was just young enough that he it was Colin Firth had to have a little kid that he was giving ice cream to, and and he kept and he kept. Uh, so I said, throw my son in there. Yeah, I said I'll do a cameo, and basically, he just kept. I need new ice cream. He, he was just he liked doing so many things because he just kept eating ice cream, and he just, <laughs> he just. And then we ended up cutting it out of the. It was in the opening. And he was like, "I cut you, cut me out my ice cream scene." He was, <laughs> he was so mad, but you got to eat all that fucking ice cream, dude. That was that's glorious. It was dope. It was dope. Um, I, I didn't really understand like what it like. I would look at the camera. <laughs> Yeah. You kept fucking up the takes just to get another cone. Yeah, you did, <laughs> dude. You nailed it. I'm actually a big fan of your ice cream commercial. Well, but see now, back to my my, my previous point, it's probably good that that wasn't out there. No, nah, man. I actually I would have respected you more if I knew I if I seen you in that commercial and that ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, been, I probably would have had an Asian. No, but you guys are awesome. Thanks for tuning in uh, to everybody. My plus one. We're, we're going to keep these guests coming and. Uh, Make sure you check out Halfway to Armorello and Comedy Crock Pot. And Comedy Crock Pot. <laughs> Mike Binder and Burt Binder. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night, guys. <laughs>